That was, that was, yeah. That's all right. We haven't talked about anything in the Hamlet yet. So we just started the recording uh, of the video again. And um, let, let us turn our attention to the Hamlet. And uh, one thing that I wanted to bring up uh, that I argued about last time, and you know, I went back to um, some places I know and, and thinking about the kind of incremental uh, possibilities for the Hamlet. Um, and I wanted to propose um, changing what I had said about no parking in front. Um, and I wanted to do it, suggest it in this way. Uh, places that I've seen function okay with parking in front. It was all basically just angle in parking, parking mm -hmm. that's literally off the street, not uh, circulation, um, not a parking lot, not a double loaded corridor, just a parking space that's off the road. Diagonal uh, parking? Yeah, or or perpendicular, but you know, mm -hmm. basically similar to on street, but off the street. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think it's a reasonable compromise in keeping um, the fronts of the buildings relatively um, people friendly and not having a large parking lot pushing the building way far back from the road, um, but also being economically viable enough that it could make it quick and easy to stop into a store and uh, address, I think, Joel's concern about some of the existing building, the existing building in West DMV. David, can you stop and just clarify? So let's say this is 96B. Someone's going to park perpendicular to the side of the road, perpendicular to the, to the run of the road. How, yeah. how would they back back out if they're in between two cars safely? Just like you do downtown. <clears throat> It was slowly. slowly. <laughs> I think that's the answer. I think you know it. It would have to have enough runoff um, space from the road that you have a, a little bit of um, backing room where you can see before you get out. Yeah. Um, Got it. And I, I do still think for a community form, it is better to have it to the side and behind. Um, but you know, I I was actually. Uh, reading uh, Jonathan, um, some of the, the Bob Gibbs yeah. um, stuff about walkable urban retail. And, you know, he's a no nonsense guy that um, likes to push back against the more designer focused people. Uh, he's a retail expert. Yeah. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, he's an expert in making successful businesses. And that's one of the things that he's said, especially in a place like the central Hamlet where we're we don't have enough people to actually support any businesses. We're relying on through traffic um, if we could get anything. Um, so I wanted to say, I, I think I was um, maybe a little overly dogmatic there. And I, I can see that as a, as a potential workaround. Um, and I wanted to see what other people thought about that and see if I don't know, do you need examples of what I'm talking about there or do you kind of get it? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen that even in even some cities in the town I grew up in had that kind of parking actually. Think of it. Yeah, I kind of think of it like downtown um, uh, Cortland, except they, I think, mess it up by making it a one way. Um, I still my town messed it up too. They took it away and made it parallel. But, yeah. David, are you talking a little bit like what they have in Owego on that um, one-way little commercial oh, yeah, strip yeah. with the Owego uh, Antique Center? That that little strip there. And Horns Jewelry. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that's another example. But I, I'm trying to think of a more a more rural context that would be good in comparison, because both that and Cortland are very urban examples of that kind of thing. Um, so I was trying to think of maybe some hamlets I've been in in the Adirondacks or something that would be a, a reasonable 
Just comparison. Go. Well, thinking back on on uh, the history of Danby, I mean, when we had Benjamin's one stop, parking was in front, but there was a, there was always a gasoline island. Uh, and the same thing was true with the store over here. There was a gasoline island. It kind of made it, would have been sort of in the way of what you're talking about. Probability going forward is that we would not have a gasoline island. The, the investment now in having gasoline retail is huge. It is in Geneva. Uh, the tank of balls. I mean, we've got that in Newfield at uh, at uh, you know an opposite Meadowbrook Trailer Park, with uh, what was called Sunny's, and is now a, you know it's a re it's got gasoline retail in front, and it's got the little, it's got the convenience store in, behind, mm -hmm. and people park either, you know along between the gas pumps and the and the road because there's some green space in between or they park right up close to the building to be out of the way of the of the of the to and from traffic on the gas on the gas island mm -hmm. um, but that does what you indicated was undesirable it, it moved the building back farther from the road i know in yeah. that case it kind of had to because the state sure. dot changed it changed the area completely when they raised the road several feet Oh, here's an example. Not a good example. <laughs> um, let's see. Does anybody else have have thoughts about that? Um, you know, I, ideally, it would be incorporated like like a road. Um, and I, I'm thinking of uh, With bump outs. You mean like uh, the corners and stuff like that? Here, I, I'm going to share a picture now. I'm thinking of Mendocino, California, which might not mean a lot to you all. Um, I don't mm -hmm. think it's as pretty as a typical upstate New York Main Street, but I do think. It can function, um, and you know this is Mendocino is a, a huge tourist attraction. And it's funny now that I've lived in upstate New York, I always thought this was such a beautiful town, and I look at it now, and it looks like kind of a dump. <laughs> um, it's really the the coast and the ocean that's the attraction, I think. But I remember thinking this was a this is a cute town. Look at that. It is the cute. I like that. Yeah, we could do that. Um, I think it's but okay. Are you but... think, you're thinking of this kind of parking in front of, not on 96B. Yeah, why not? I'm thinking of it. Or you'd have to completely re, you know, re demark I'm the, thinking the whole town. If, I'm um, thinking going through the town, the, the highway. There's plenty of room. I mean, the highway's ridiculous. I, I agree. I agree. But I'm saying you'd have to then get the DOT involved, and that's huge. True. Yeah. yeah. There are so, no trees in, you know, in this whole strip. It's really yeah. on a hot day. It would be awful. Yeah. Well, that's why I've suggested requiring trees in our code. Um, you know, this is just an example of the kind of parking that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. um, so I, what I, what I was really suggesting is that I could imagine a building with parking like this on Bald Hill Road um, on that corner. Or, you know, I could imagine someone wanting to extend pavement and you know, put a small pipe to have maybe a hundred feet of this on Olivia's parcel, um, which would really be, it, it would be the developer who would have to work with um, the DOT. The DOT. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, we talked about that parcel in West Andy, uh, which I think, Joel, you said was traditionally more like this as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, that one and Benjamin one stop both, you know, that the, the parking was in front of the building, not a whole lot of green space, a um, little bit of an island at, up by the road. Right. What, what I think we don't want is what has been proposed for uh, the new a hospital development on Route 13 in the city, which is the road and then 
green space and then a sidewalk and then more green space and then a double loaded parking lot and then more green space and more sidewalk and then a building. So the building ends up being way back 50 feet or 80 feet from the road. Um, that doesn't, doesn't do a good job of creating um, any kind of context that we're really looking for. That double loaded parking lot would be fine in back though. Sure, absolutely. So it doesn't sound like anyone has concerns with my backtracking um, on that issue. Okay. Uh, let me look back at the list of things we needed to focus further on. Um, so we discussed parking placement requirements. Um, the other two things were flexibility about businesses in the Hamlet neighborhood zone. And Olivia is now bringing up questions about businesses in the Hamlet center zone. Um, uh, but maybe we can, we can think a little more about businesses and the way they would be allowed in the Hamlet neighborhood zone. The other, the other question I had, which I'm not sure has been that, um, really addressed is how do we keep what's been happening for the last 30 years from continuing to happen, which is that instead of getting a, a dense infill of, of uh, buildings, we end up with somebody buying five acres or somebody's got 20 acres and instead they, they plop a house in the middle of it um, mm -hmm. within, without any relationship to anything that's already there. Right. Um, maybe we can talk about that next. Is that, are you talking about the Hamlet? Yeah, is that, I agree, Rhonda. Is that necessary? There may not be 20 acre parcels in the Hamlet. I don't think there are any. Well, it happened not very long ago with the area, with the property that was on off of Michigan Hollow Road. Uh, That's where, not the uh, if we're going to discuss it, we should do it now because Russ isn't here, and that's exactly what he did. <laughs> he built his by his own admission. He built his house in the middle of a cornfield. Well, that's not the Hamlet. But I mean the. the the area off of Michigan Hollow Road, it's closest to the Hamlet, which is behind the houses that line Bald Hill Road, was identified as a prime area for Hamlet expansion because the soils were better there for septic. Um, and what happened there was somebody bought the property and, and, and they divided into like three lots uh, and plopped houses that sort of what looks almost like at random on the property. That's uh, what you're talking about, Joel? Yeah. That's pretty awful. Yeah. Well, people who live there don't I think thought, that. I, thought, I think that's the woman who it was working on vegan school lunches. That's, you know, that's a, a, a special mm -hmm. kind of cooperative farming. That was the intention, at least, I think, for that. Yep. But um, as you can see, yeah. not a whole lot of that happening. <laughs> and they did, could have used a combined driveway or something. Right. <laughs> so, I, so that's, I, I that's just an example, is though. It, is that the Hamlet neighborhood? I mean, I'm more, I'm wondering, say, like again, just to use the 1874 and 1882 as examples. So, if Alex and her husband decided they wanted to build another house on the property, um, that would be allowed now, right? Yeah, probably. They wouldn't really have to. They might have to get permitted, but they could go ahead and just build another maybe a, a, even a two unit dwelling. Mm -hmm. they, would have to have have they would have to deal with this, the septic and water. Right, septic, right. But, the yeah. septic and, and, but I mean, at, at this point, that would be perfectly allowable, right? Yep. Yep. Encouraged, I would say. Right. And that's my concern is that we could end up, well, we could end up with a whole bunch of flag lots is what we could end up with. And maybe that's okay. But it doesn't cut. It doesn't get you anywhere towards a direct towards a a, a grid, if you will, of, of streets and blocks. Hey, baby. I'm getting off topic here, but what's going on at the corner of Michigan Hollow and 96B? No idea. Yeah, I don't know. There, there is a um, realtor listing for that property. Active. There is actually now. 
Uh, it came online earlier this week. I don't remember when. Is it being sold as residential? I didn't. I didn't look too closely at it. And how Is many? That the in I think that's high density. That's still in the high density residential zone, Rhonda. Yeah. I, I think it was the the, o the only thing that I remember seeing was that it was business or oriented, I think. Yeah, because the guy who owned it said he wanted to put up that dry, dry cleaning business. I remember when um, CJ had the PUD meetings and, sh and he was one of the PUDs and he came and and that's what he said he wanted to do with the land, but maybe he's decided to sell it instead. Oh, Rhonda, you mean the land that used to be a planned development zone, that piece of property? Yes. Oh, okay. I thought you meant Thank the other one, the derelict house there on the corner. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Yeah. That actually is in the Hamlet neighborhood. You're not off topic, Rhonda. Um, right, I, I know it is. Yeah, yeah. I know. I did. That, I always thought that would be a great place for somebody to put in a little Tompkins County Welcome Center or something like that. I thought um, a diner. <laughs> What's that? A diner. That'd be a nice place for a diner. But what's just, apt to happen is somebody buy the whole property and put a house in the middle of it. Uh huh. Okay. Right. Actually, uh, and it, more on topic is what's happening now, David, to the little place next to the town hall. Yeah, I think I think both of those are relevant, and I think both of them, um, the the parcel Rhonda was talking about is this parcel, yeah, which is a substantially sized piece of the Hamlet neighborhood. It's definitely not in the center. It's not what I would call. Uh, super walkable to what we have identified as the center. Um, oh, that's that. I think that's very walkable. Yeah, very not very, it's not very far from the core. Yeah, well, that's just need sidewalks. Five minutes. The shoulders. Are pretty good. And if you have a little entrance, a pedestrian entrance to the park, that's really nice there. David, could you zoom in a little? I can. I'm trying to read this on my phone, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Is that better? Yeah. That's you can much see better. Where, you can see where there's a southern entry to the park. Mm -hmm. That little green strip. Yeah. Which they were, yeah. which they wanted to use as an entrance, but we prevailed upon them not to because it's it's right. a dangerous place to come out because of the curve. Mm -hmm. But it'd be fine as a pedestrian entry. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Uh, so my discussions with the owner of that property um, were focused on um, residential, really. Um, I, I encourage him to think about the residential possibilities that could come with the zoning update um, or with the current zoning, but it's, current, it's currently zoned commercial A. Um, and I think as I mentioned last time, um, I have realized that our commercial zone currently allows infinite housing. Um, there is no uh -huh. yeah. on density in the commercial zones. Um, so what's funny about that is it actually makes my zoning proposal not particularly radical uh, because it's basically in place in a lot of the Hamlet already. Um, it's How just many acres is that? I, I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, I think it's like it's either seven or nine. It, I mean, hmm. you know, if we could if we could do it, you know, a, a quarter acre per lot kind of development, there you could accommodate a lot of houses. Yeah, you could make a little micro neighborhood, um, a, a cluster or a, a cottage court or something like that it would make a lot of sense there. Um, we have a lot of, you know, back acreage, uh, all, you know, in, in that, in that, uh, you know, pale orange neighborhood zone that, you know, we already have a couple of people who, who chosen to build back in and then they plop their house in the middle of an open area and it kind of gets in the way of, of, of ever creating a, you know, a, a, a 
putting the street through to create more frontage. That yeah. you can have I, lots of. I think residential dwellings there would be very dangerous because of the, well, people would be slowing down uh, from whatever direction they were coming and it's on the curve and it's right there at the 55 mile an hour zone. And the people that come through the hamlet from the north, uh, you know, even by the, by Gary's comments that come zooming in through sometimes at 90 miles an hour and seems awfully dangerous to me. Well, it's no more dangerous than any of the other houses that are right there. Right. Right. So David, uh -huh. you've, you've had recent conversations with them? I did um, because they they were in that odd situation where they were a PUD and then the PUD was taken away and replaced with commercial and they were asked to choose what commercial and I think they're the only people who chose commercial A because I think yeah. my understanding is that people kind of got asked and everyone said well commercial C of course because it allows yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah. So I don't, I don't know how they ended up with the short end of the straw on that. Um, but it does allow some commercial uses, but I explained to them, you know, what we're looking at with the Hamlet and how we want to create, you know, more cluster development here and um, how it, the Hamlet neighborhoods focus as drafted. And, you know, that I think that's what I want to talk about now is if this should change is intended to be primarily residential. Um, Let's hope the dollar store doesn't find out about that. Um, if we're looking at, I mean, it's a long way out, but, you know, how houses are placed on the site and the opportunities for future road locations, like, is there, I don't know this from a planning perspective, is there any way to, to Oh, yeah. have that kind of laid out as without it I don't know just as a backup for planning review of, of projects coming in there is and I think this is something that um, Joel and I have talked about um, the previous tradition was that villages would plan their street grid hamlets and villages would plan from the beginning how the streets would be laid out and there would be a map and it's where the term paper streets comes from, that these streets were planned and they're in paper. And when someone wants to subdivide, they'd be required um, to build around that. Um, you know, generally that happened when you were cutting up 200 acre lots. Um, it gets to be more of a fraught conversation when you're looking at, you know, a dozen, two to 10 acre lots. You have a bunch yeah. of um, property owners to deal with and you know a, a, a block the ideal block length is like 200 by 300. Um, it's quite small um, and you could create blocks like that in a lot of existing parcels. Um, one thing Joel had asked me is could I draw some lines on the hamlet to show how we could create a street grid um, for the future. And I, I'm reticent to do that. And what I told him is I'm reticent for two reasons. The first being it's really a landscape architect or civil engineer's job being guided by a planner. Um, so I'd, I'd hate to do something even with the you know, caveat that it's just conceptual um, because as soon as you put lines like that down, then all the criticism focuses there. And, you know, you yeah. went through a part that was too steep or there's a wetland or, you know, there's something else, you know, uh, Billy Bob, whose parcel you started with is really upset about it or, you know, whatever. And there's a million ways that we could create some little blocks. Um, and I think in the past, the, like the Hamlet study, the Hamlet revitalization study demonstrated a couple ways that that could happen. And 
you know, it's so speculative. No, it's not a proposal that anyone has, but that's still enough to get a bunch of neighbors really upset. <laughs> right. yeah, about. It, it, it did the trick last time, true. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, so I have some reticence about that. Um, but, you know, truth be told, you could create a block just in that parcel probably um, right. the road that went in and came out and was double loaded with houses and um, you know that there's there's so a lot the of possibilities. U-shaped road. Yeah there's a lot of uh, a lot of places that you could do something like that um, and I, I think that exercise that we had of looking at all the different hamlets and villages at the same scale you know is somewhat instructive in the possibilities, but uh, I'm just a little reticent to create controversy over a made up system of roads that no one is actually interested in implementing. Mm -hmm. David, oh. if, we were, if we were to um, develop that in a um, sort of higher density residential, kind of what we've been thinking about for the Nichman property, if we put in some kind of, you know, if the town were to put in some kind of, you know, little municipal system there in the hamlet, mm -hmm. do you think it could extend potentially to that, that, or would that be too far away? Because I'm thinking what we really need to do in a way is identify the properties that are kind of available for development in the hamlet and really try somehow proactively to go out and look for individuals who, you know, who want to develop them in the in the way we'd like to see, and they can see that it's not just, you know, this one property at 1839 Dandy Road, but that's connected now to an act, you know, some kind of major development on Michigan Hollow and 96B, and that it's all connected, and that it adds value that we're not just promoting individual lots, but that it's kind of a vision that we're promoting. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do think that that's a good idea. And I think I've described that as a very good phase two, mm -hmm. uh, you know, after we have zoning in place that's friendly to development, to residential okay. development, then I, I could really spend time doing that. And one of the things uh, to bring us a little bit in a circle, one of the things that I think would be useful in a survey is, are you interested in selling your parcel at some time in the next 20 years? Are you thinking about development or subdivision? Um, uh, one of the things that, you know, I think it's good for people to think about is how long have they been here and how much longer do they plan to be here? Um, you know, I, I would go even beyond that and say, you know, would you be willing to, as opposed to, are you planning on it or are you thinking about it? Or, mm -hmm. Because, uh, you know, it, it, if any interest, that there are some people who are public spirited enough to, to say, well, you know, I, it's not what I had in mind, but uh, as, as Russ did, you know, saying, well, it wasn't what I really had in mind, but I'd be willing to think about it if it's what the town wants to happen. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking, Joel? I mean, are you expecting these people to sell their house so you can tear it down? No, I'm not thinking, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm more of a historic preservationist than probably most other people here, but the, so I'm not, I'm not into tearing things down, but I am interested in building things up. And my, my, my initially expressed concern was that we, you know, we were making it possible to, to, to Add more housing, make it easier. Uh, I just, I just don't want the, the the additions to make it harder and harder to do something logical in terms of you know streets and 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 and, and neighborhoods. Yeah, uh, I think the perfect example of what Joel is expressing concern about is this house. You know, which I assume what this lot was subdivided from this lot. There. We're not we're not seeing it, David, because you haven't taken one down yet. Or are you pointing to one? Are you pointing to the same map? I am pointing to the same map. Uh, a little okay. pink circle. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, right. Let me make a bigger. Is that the one that the rose did? Um, so right at the 
what is this? Um, Officer Hornbrook. Hornbrook. Yeah, Hornbrook, uh, just north of Town Hall. Um, there's the property with the barn and the house. And I think that was originally all this lot and then um, subdivided off relatively recently this lot to someone who rather than you know building continuing the kind of character of the street build a house all the way in the back kind of as far back as you can with it's very you know that would be appropriate in a very rural place um, it doesn't really contribute to creating a hamlet um, I don't think it precludes the possibility of building something in the front um, I do think it's unlikely that they would do are, that. Are you talking about the row property? I think so, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, that's unfortunate. They had a fire and they had a beautiful little Gothic revival farmhouse that oh. it was just darling. And yeah, and the barn, I don't think the barn is going to last much longer. Oh, really. so I think the, they don't have the resources uh, to maintain it. I think the house in the back went to their a daughter. Son or no, a daughter. A daughter. A daughter. A daughter. Right. Yeah. We have, I have several examples like that in West Danby where, you know, to, what would have been logical to ex expand the hamlet into it in, in multiple right. instances got carved into five acre lots or bigger, mm -hmm. with, you know, a house way to heck back. Right. It doesn't bear any relationship to anything that was here before. But that's been the pattern. That's been a pattern for the last 40 years, you know, because there's not much going on in the hamlet. Nobody feels the need to relate to anything that's there. They're just buying their place in the country. Mm -hmm. The Rose have been involved in Danby for a really long time. And I um, let Liz Rowe know about our work but uh, and the survey, but she hasn't participated. But I can be in touch with her and encourage her to fill out the survey. Yeah, well, they will I, tell you that they're not interested in developing, but they did what I, they did. Well, I don't know. I mean, her daughter is uh, a tenant of mine at 1849, and I, I mean, you know, who knows, potentially down the road, but I don't, I think it will be too late to save the barn, probably. Well, it will be shortly because it's not going to be, it, it's, it's deteriorating pretty badly with the leaking roof. <laughs> Too bad we can't find some way to help get a grant or something to restore that barn. Yeah, it was a beautiful barn. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't know if that's impossible. Um, that's not, barn preservation isn't something I'm particularly knowledgeable about, but, um, you know, that's the kind of thing where talking to people, you know, if that's something they were interested in, that's something that we could, would know to look into. Um, but it would also be interesting to know they have a huge parcel. You know, yeah. it's as, as useful or more useful than Russ's parcel in terms of potential. Um, Got quite a bit of wetland on it though. It does have quite a bit of wetland. Through there. Uh, Rick Lazarus is uh, the local barn expert. Oh, but, uh, can't be all that wet. What'd you say, Leslie? I, I just I know there's a creek running through there, and um, you know, nice patch of bamboo. But that, that 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 used to be ball fields. People used to play baseball back there, so it can't mm. be too wet. Trying to remember if it's mapped county or federal. I thought there was some mapped wetland on there. But yeah. I'd be definitely. pleased to find it if not. <laughs> Liz is a very abrasive individual, but I will do my best to try and get her engaged. She kind of terrifies me then. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, they, you know, everyone is welcome to participate, but also just knowing if people are thinking about the future of their property um, or would think about selling it, you know, um, or are thinking about, you know, estate planning or the, those kinds of things are, are I think, useful. Um, we, we are not and really cannot be the master developer. Um, 
there may be some some work there that we can do. But again, we're mostly setting the table for the incremental um, improvement and change in the Hamlet. So I, I actually think that what we are more planning for is what Olivia mentioned earlier with um, the people who are neighbors to her, you know, could they add an accessory dwelling unit or a second unit um, to their house? I think those kinds of changes are more of what we'll see in uh, mm -hmm. less of, you know, a big development outfit from out of town coming in and building something that totally changes the face of the Hamlet. I think that's a lot less likely. Well, you know, the reality is that there hasn't been a whole lot of single family housing construction period, much of anywhere in the county because of the economics of the market where existing houses are worth more than new ones. Yeah. Um, yeah, there you go. Yeah. There you can see there's definitely a fair amount and of what, what, would ha what will happen to the taxes? I mean, say Kevin and Gladys build um, a, a house for their kids. Will they, and it's on their property, the current existing surveyed lot, they have 17 acres and they build a house for their kids how, how does that, how do they figure out the, the, the taxes then? And, um, you know, that kind of thing. So a second house on a lot that is not subdivided is generally worth less than a house on its own lot. But that's um, a good thing in a way then, because, I mean, a, for the people who own it. Right. Well, and yeah, and for future buyers or for future tenants. Um, it keeps things a little bit more affordable, uh, which, you know, we were having a conversation in another meeting about, you know, what if, what if someone adds a second house in a way that they can't subdivide it? I think that's great. Then you have a cheaper housing alternative kind of permanently. Um, and there's no problem with having lots that forever have more than one housing unit on them. That's, that's a good, uh, it's a good option to have. It's a good kind of variety to have in a community. When it shows up on an assessment map, that kind of additional house, is it uh, delineated by a dotted line? No, it's not a separate parcel. It's just part of, it's part of the, Existing, it's part of the parcel. It's because just like having the, a duplex or a triplex. Right, but uh, sometimes I see these dotted lines on the assessment maps and- Those are generally things that are like a condo. Um, so you'll see that at, uh, what is it called? Um, that weird townhouse development on uh, State Street going out of Ithaca. Um, you might even see that on an assessment map for Whitehawk, where people don't actually own their lots. It's all one lot. There aren't small lots in mm. terms of taxes. Um, well, I think Corbett has that on her property. There's a, um, a parcel on her property that I think is separated by dotted lines. I don't know. It could sometimes that just shows a parcel that was combined. Um, so is it, a, is it a separate address and it does it become 1883 Danby Road or is it all 1882 and, and the, the whoever is, owns 1882 pays taxes on that and depending upon how it's reassessed with the new building they're paying more taxes or whatever. Yeah. Okay, the, that's second, how it works? Okay. the second. It would be like 1882 and a half. Huh. But it would all, but it's all, I mean, that's the way the post office would deal with it. The way assessment right. would deal with it is it's one parcel. Right. The owner of record. Yeah. Just like you could do your entire master plan um, without subdividing, and it would just be, you know, it would be like the mall. You know, the mall is one parcel, um, multiple tenants. Yeah. The spot where the the little uh, walkway into the 
Danby Park. Mm -hmm. um, what does that lead to when you walk through there and go into the park? Is there anything special there at the moment or do you just walk into the brush? Mm -hmm. Walk into the brush and then into where the, um, the, the Frisbee thing is. Maybe the park people ought to be encouraged to kind of make that an, an, an alternative entrance to the park. Mm -hmm. You might mm -hmm. have people parking on the road there then. Well, I just uh, meant for people who are walking along the road. It's right. No, I agree with you, Ron. I mean, that would be the hope. But I'm thinking that maybe some people would say, okay, we're going to park here across from Lacey's and then we'll walk into the park from there. And uh, it's a pretty little, it's it's lovely little entrance. And, why not? Um, you know, that would, if, 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 the, if people did that and they were parking along the road, we'd have more of a case for why we should be lowering the speed limit farther up. Hey. And they would slow down traffic naturally just by being there. Parking on the road is one of the best things you can do to slow traffic. Uh, but maybe we can get back to um, thinking about businesses in the Hamlet neighborhood zone. Uh, I have a semi-relevant thought. Just it's just, I don't. It's probably completely crazy, but in the um, easements. Would, is there any such thing as an easement on that property or could there be and the easement is designed so that that front part of that property were in an easement that would allow businesses in the future and it would help them with their taxes in the present it's probably a crazy thought but i'm not sure i understand it where do you uh, live, catherine which part what I'm, I'm not understanding where you're okay. thinking. I'm talking about that person that you were talking about, the big lot with the house in the back and that big lot. Yeah. And the that road way, property. The road, yeah, the road the property. Right. Yeah, so what if there were an in those easement restrictions, an easement restriction that said nothing else could happen here um, except business in the future, and that would help them with taxes in the present? As I said, probably a crazy idea, but... I'm still not understanding. So they have a long driveway. That's I think I get what Catherine is saying. If if a, a property owner could kind of try to reduce their value by designating future use of their property for businesses, um, which is huh. you know sort of like master planning. Like if if when they did site plan review for that house, which they didn't do, you don't do site plan, you haven't done site plan review for single family houses, they would have just gone and gotten a building permit. Right. But if they did site plan review, you know, you could say you have to think about, you have to think about and make a plan for the road, um, which is kind of what I've said in the zoning that uh, with regard to filling the frontage. So one of the form requirements is that you fill 60% of the frontage when you create a new lot or do a new building. Mm -hmm. um, and then the caveat about that is if you can't, then you need a plan for how you could in the future. So let's say, let's say this is your lot and you were talking about building out the frontage and you're only gonna put one building and it's gonna be right here. Um, that, that doesn't, get the density of frontage that we want for a hamlet. But if you put it on the edge and showed how, you know, your parking, you have a parking lane that goes to the back and then you have space for another two buildings along the street that you could do in the future, then you're not precluding that um, the way that you would preclude it with other ways of laying out the site. That's um, getting at what I was asking about. Yeah. So getting away from my question, but more on your question, Joel, two of the, some of the form requirements that are baked in um, require built out, build out of the frontage. Um, and I do think that the wording I have there needs a little bit of um, refining. And what I've, what I've done in other places is you designate the, the way you measure that build out is 
that how the width of buildings that are within a certain distance from the road. So um, say the, the width of the parcel at 20 feet off the road, you're filling 60% of that with a building, um, mm -hmm. which I think helps clarify what it means. I think maybe people didn't understand what that meant. Um, that gets at that, that problem of, you know, having people just where we want them to really have small parcels, just continuing to have really large parcels because they can afford it, the land's not very valuable, it's easy, um, that kind of thing. Um, so I think that would be that is useful and is kind of baked in already um, to the code uh, to help prevent that. Um, the, the question that was we were left with last time um, was this question about businesses outside of the outside of the core but in the hamlet. Um, so I, I'd like to think more about that we we kept the core really small, um, not really small. We acknowledge that the core is the size of the entire Ithaca Commons, um, but we also uh, kept it smaller than other people were thinking, right? So uh, mm -hmm. we have a, a compact space that can, we can focus our energy to have a walkable part of the community and then the concept of the rest of the Hamlet neighborhood is to be a place for customers that can walk or bike um, or drive, um, but have the option to access that core and serve businesses there. Um, we've had discussions about other businesses on those other roads and some of that um, comes down to the fact that there are some properties that might make sense for that. For example, Christina was here. She owns a barn on uh, Gunderman, I think. Um, and it was a, a barn for cows and it will never be a barn for cows again. And the question is what makes sense to allow her to do there? Would it make sense to allow her to have weddings there? Um, would it make sense to say you can only turn it into apartments? Um, this is a residential area. Uh, you're close to the core, um, but you're not in it. So this isn't a place for you to um, have a restaurant or a wedding venue or an art studio or anything like that. Um, I, I think we'll probably come down somewhere in between uh, but I, I want to think together about what kind of businesses beyond home, uh, home business, home-based businesses would be reasonable in this Hamlet neighborhood context, which um, I, I think it's one of few places in the town where the word neighborhood really does apply in the traditional sense. Um, and so I think we do need to be careful about being too loose with businesses in that area. Um, well, that area or any area, really, that's, that's the, the, the point of having to have uh, criteria for including them anywhere mm -hmm. um, to ensure that there, that there are impacts are, are gonna be tolerable you know, within wh wherever they locate. Yeah. And, um, you know, the, the, the event venue, uh, you, you, people may recall, it was not that long ago when we had an issue with the, the with variously called, you know, Common Ground, Oasis, um, that building at the north end of the town, which was, went through a variety of different owners and, and a variety of different kinds of uses and it was a real headache for the residential properties in the neighborhood when um, it was an, an, an incarnation that was, was particularly noisy uh, and and uh, the town leaned on them to keep the noise inside basically because they had done at one point put by putting up a stage so they could have outside events uh, and, and they were saying well wait a minute um, it's, a bit much. Uh, 
so but there might be places where that would be appropriate i mean um some people also remember um, rick dobson wanting to have a woodstock like event on his um, property a number of years ago uh, i don't think it came it didn't come to pass but um, it was not an off-the-wall idea well when we were talking about the rose barn um i was sort of the person who started the idea that weddings were tourism and so way back when I set up my website. And um, I, I've been watching the use of barns for weddings and it works in some cases. In fact, it can work really, really well in some cases. And in other cases, it doesn't work well. And that's, it all has to do with the location. You know, if it's a big enough space so that you can have even the option of having the wedding outside under a tent and then the barn is used for dancing and things like that or used in the winter time for um, having conferences and all those sorts of things then you you have something that really ends up being of value, but when the barn is very restrictive, then that creates all kinds of problems. So in a way, it's too bad that the Rose ended up building the trailer in place of their house. They had taken that barn and refurbished it right there in downtown Danby might have been a really good place for some sort of a, a barn used for conferences and, and meetings and that sort of thing. Yeah, keep in mind, it is indeed a double wide and it wouldn't be that hard to move. Yeah. Well, they, they also still had horses and they would not have considered, I think, an option like that. It would have been far too expensive. But yeah. in terms of the barn on, um, on Gunderman, it would be really you know, interesting potentially to connect that to what Nancy has with the gallery. Um, that yeah. would be really nice. Uh, connection there. People come to the gallery and then have a ceremony there and move on to the barn or whatever, vice versa. So I think that's uh, that's something. Mm -hmm. I think the owner was in touch with me online and I need to be in, uh, respond to her. She expressed some interest in uh, my property. It's not a zoning matter, but um, I don't know if we could tie the two hand in hand um and that like i think a lot of spaces wouldn't be that bad if you had our restrictions like mm -hmm. i'm in a very residential area and if you had a wedding venue across the street that ran until 9 or 10 p.m it wouldn't be so bad but if we we're still having people leaving a wedding at midnight i would be more offended by it yeah, I agree with that. So, yeah. but but I mean that's all business license, which is not zoning. So, <laughs> yeah, and then we had um, we had guy weighing in on that too, and saying that you can there's a limit to how much you can regulate these things um, because it's sort of inherent in the kinds of businesses that you allow. You know, if you have a bar, you know, bars don't usually close down at 11 p.m. You, know, you can't right. say that they have to because that's not. It, that's not uh, it's not a reasonable uh, imposition. Yeah. I also I have better. friends who just recently not in Ithaca but opened a brewery and they were thinking about doing events based on the second story of the barn that they did the brewery in and they deferred it because they couldn't ex they couldn't afford the expenditure of sprinkling the whole building. So yeah, yeah, there's that on the owners of the property as well. Mm-hmm. But say if the music is contained inside, um, that would be one thing. But on Gunderman, I could see also the issue around parking. And that's where we came down on that on, on the Oasis slash Common Ground building, which was that we it was okay for them to do in to inside uh, events, but not okay for them to do outside. But that's part of site plan review to ensure, ensure compatibility. Um, so the, the only uses currently in the draft by site plan review, there's the only use without site plan review is residential. Um, and then accessory uses that don't require site plan review 
are accessory to the residential use. Um, so if you have a residential use, then you can also have um, bed and breakfast, child care, adult care, home occupations, or professional offices, or no more than five, um, five non-residents. Um, moving up to site plan review for primary uses, you could use a parcel for a child care, group care, community center, fire station, library, um, multiple residents, schools, um, parks, and residential care rehab facilities. Um, site plan approval on corner lots only included restaurants and bars, um, repair shop, personal services under 3,000 square feet, retail under 3,000 square feet. So the, the feedback was that only on corners there was too restrictive. I don't think that we want those things to be allowed just anywhere in the in that entire zone. Um, I don't think that that, and I guess what I think doesn't really matter that much because I'm not the one who has to live there, but it, my <laughs> advice would be that that may not make sense um, to allow you know, a restaurant to be anywhere in the Hamlet neighborhood zone. Um, what, what makes it more, what makes it less uh, of a problem if it's on a corner than if it's not? Um, well, starting with a uh, corner has twice the on-street parking of a non-corner lot. True. Um, well, and it, I think in our plan, the only corners are connected to 96 B. <laughs> Yeah, there's a few. Um, yeah, we don't have a lot of corners. <laughs> right, so we have this intersection, which is four corners in the, um, the neighborhood. Miller Road, um, yeah. These parcels are a corner in the neighborhood zone. These parcels are a corner in the neighborhood zone. Uh, and then I was thinking that, you know, say the Dobson parcel was developed. Um, I think probably we would end up rezoning it for development, but if mm -hmm. we didn't and a street grid was put in, you could still have anywhere a new street made corners, um, that would also be a possibility. And mm -hmm. I, I think that that is similar to, you know, what uh, Whitehawk had proposed of, you know, they basically made a new street and then on their corner, they had proposed the possibility of a bakery. Um, and I think that makes sense. Uh, so corner streets. Where was the bakery, are, where was the bakery proposed? Uh, I, I think on 96B next to their driveway. Um, and their driveway really, you know, it creates a corner. So yeah, you know, right. there's, there's a reason that we have the term corner store. It's because corners in a neighborhood are a place that really makes sense you know, you can have the corner be a little more public and then have the interior of a block is a little more private, um, more, you know, for the residents and not so much a place that people are coming to. I think if that's the case, the, then they've changed their idea because I remember them discussing the business of the bakery and it was going, it was there in their circle of houses. So. Okay, well. That's what I thought too, but I could be wrong. So but. if we if we expand this, are we opening up to like now we're looking at a third zone? Well, are we that's getting a, to I don't know? That is a question. Um, so there's there's a few ways that we could go here. I like I said, I do not think that every parcel in the Hamlet neighborhood um, is a parcel where you would want to allow a restaurant or a retail store to open. Um, most of that is what I've said before about if we're gonna ever create a sense of place, we have to concentrate commercial development in particular locations. And if you just kind of randomly mm -hmm. disperse things, it, it just doesn't work that way um, to create a place. Then you end um, up with Stella's Barn in Newfield. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess what I was wondering is, is this like a second 
interim distance like along 96 from like so far from the core hamlet yeah um, you I know think that's a good idea kelly i think that's a really good point but then like like i was asking i don't know if that then is the third zone i don't think a third zone is a terrible idea um you know in this kind of thinking that we're doing using a quarter mile and a half mile circle and having um, kind of mixed use, uh, mixed uses and traditional scale development, it, it's basically new urbanism, which is the same as old urbanism. But mm -hmm. um, in new urbanist thinking, you know, a quarter mile circle would have three or four zones in it, which is different than the modernist way we're thinking where we, we, where you have thousands of acres or hundreds of acres that are all one zone. Um, but it is normal in uh, the building of traditional communities to have multiple zones close together. For simplicity's sake, I was trying to just do two. Um, Can you use the, um, you know, the, we have had people or, and, and had the thought expressed multiple times that, you know, there's certain businesses which, which would want to be on the main highway because they need the traffic um, or the traffic generating. Uh, could we then just require that they be there and not any old place in the, you know, in, in the surrounding area? So yeah, we could, we could make that, that other zone basically be zone for 200 feet from 96 B up and down the corridor within what we've kind of called the Hamlet neighborhood now mm -hmm. and could allow more businesses there. Um, I, I cringe at allowing uh, basically what, what you just said, Joel, of you know, really car focused drive to businesses in those areas. Um, well, there, there are some businesses which are not very well suited to the neighborhood, you know, the, 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 the things like the nurseries, uh, you know, they take up too much space to put them in the core. Yeah. Well, do they make sense in the hamlet then? Well, that's a good question. But, you know, but there's a, that, that's why the larger question was, if not there, then where? Mm -hmm. um, so my neighbor, I wouldn't call her my neighbor. She's about a mile down the road from me has had a nursery for many years. And then there's another one at the end of South Danby Road at the corner of 96B. Uh, they tend to be sort of home oriented. Yeah, well, yeah. We're, I mean, we're, we're not really picking and choosing um, from a menu what will get built, but um, thinking about what would be allowed and what would be beneficial in the creation of mm -hmm. real um, I mean, there's a lot of benefit to aggregation. Yeah, and, we do. I mean, to be fair, we do have a hamlet that's like three times the size of conventional hamlet planning. So I guess we have space for thinking about things that might usually be outside a hamlet, um, being at the kind of the north end um, or the far south end, really. You know, we have this big parcel down here that is already kind of an industrial use. Looking at the map, my inclination would be to um, shrink the size. I think this is what Kelly is getting at, shrink the size of the neighborhood um, zone. I mean, it also reduces potential conflict if I think of what you have there for Bald Hill Road, all those different lots. I mean, you know, people start putting in all kinds of different businesses. And um, I mean, you're just increasing the potential for conflict. And um, as you said, maybe just 200 feet off of 96 feet that that creates the neighborhood. I don't know, but it, 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 that, that neighborhood zone, that light pink is really big. Right, well, it's um, supposed to be all residential. Just oh, residential, yeah. Yeah. Right. 
we're talking about you know dense residential development in that in that area. If we're gonna if we're gonna have a meaningful place to put all the housing we say we want focused in the Hamlets, there's gotta be some place for it. Yeah. And you okay, know, so I, that's all just residential. It's not, and there's no home business, or I mean. Oh yeah, what well, they were saying, you know, home business is accommodated. Okay. Um, anywhere within the zone. Either one of them. And home business being really carefully de defined. So, like, I mean, right now, then actually, the the um, the wedding venue would not be permitted in that area. Correct. And that, that was, I think, one of the complaints about the proposal is that people had ideas of things and they were saying, why, okay. why can't we do this? Oh, I see. Okay. Um, you know, and my concern was mm -hmm. uh, the, point, the point of the zone is that right. we say that the Hamlet core is the place for, you know, energy right. and vitality and people mm -hmm. to come. And then the yeah. other places is where you have you know, more of a quiet neighborhood, maybe less quiet than other parts of the town, but right, still right. Mm -hmm. uh, a neighborhood. Um, okay, thanks for clarifying that. Yeah. So you so, can't uh, really have, have your cake and eat it too. Right, you, you can't accommodate everyone who wants to have a business while also accommodating everyone who doesn't want to ever be next to a business. So what did you want to happen or what did you expect as an outcome of all of this discussion, David? Uh, I, I want us to decide, are we changing the draft um, to something different, to allowing more businesses than I had proposed? Um, are we changing the draft to allow a bit less businesses than I proposed? Um, I, I'd really like us to... Um, but you're talking now about the, the Hamlet core or the, the neighborhood zones? The neighborhood. Mm -hmm. The neighborhood. And I can put that on the screen. That, that might mm -hmm. be helpful. Well, it sounds like the, the neighborhood zones is really just more residential density. And well, maybe that's what they have a occupation. Right. Mm -hmm. Although, I mean, I have, a, I, I, I still have a problem and I think we should address it. it, it, it if it's okay as a home occupation, why is it not okay as, as, as a, the same business, not okay if it's not a home occupation. What do you mean by that, Joel? Well, for instance, uh, you know, because they, they can then be done in accessory buildings, just any number of times somebody has built a garage or an outbuilding to house their woodworking passion or their you know pottery studio or right. whatever, um, it's okay as a home occupation. Um, but what happens if you know the person who built it, you know? well inevitably moves on and somebody else buys the property why should that facility not be still usable for the purpose for which it was constructed just because somebody else is living there and they don't want to do the woodworking why can't they rent it out to somebody who does so joel i i actually think maybe we need to consider a different um delineation between what is and what isn't a home business um in that scenario, because the reason that home businesses are allowed in areas that otherwise don't allow commercial is because there is an effect of having a resident on the lot. It's the That's difference be between someone who's repairing cars in their garage and lanes. Um, it, it does make a difference to the character to have someone living there. And I think frequently in these things, there is a a classist element that people say, well, it needs to be the owner who lives there, um, not a renter. Uh, you know, I think that's ridiculous. But I do think that there's something to uh, a business on a lot does behave differently when somebody lives there, um, in addition to it just being the business. And I think that creates something different. So I, I actually don't think there's any reason uh, you know, somebody who develops uh, a wood shop in a garage couldn't lease it to somebody else, as long as there's still someone living on the lot as well. When you tear well, down the house and you turn it into just a commercial use, um, I think that becomes less appropriate. Well, the scale of it should be constrained in much the same way. And we, our home occupations are limited in, in terms of how many employees there are 
and the requirements for site plan review um, in, in the event that, that there's external evidence of the business being there. Um, those same criteria should apply whether or not it's, it's, a, 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 an, it's, it's a home occupation. Mm -hmm. Because well, yeah. I, th I think we've discussed that I have a big problem with the fact that the town doesn't define garage in any meaningful way. So right. this is a, this a is 5, true. thousand square foot pole barn is a garage and is allowed. Yeah. And I, think, I think that's really the only issue is that we are allowing things that are out of scale and that we need to um, limit that. I agree. Um, you know, the, we, an awful lot of stuff has been has been countenanced under the guise of, of the home occupation, which really have people saying, what? Um, but, you know, if we, if, we, if we could come to agreement about what, what, what scale is reasonable for home occupation, and by and large, I mean, the, the, the number of employees was a, was a, was a pretty good lid. Uh, and then having site plan criteria that, that ensured that, you know, it wasn't unsightly and it was adequately, uh, you know, there was adequate provisions for, for parking their vehicles, not up and down the street, you know, this kind of stuff. Um, it, it, it worked pretty well uh, when it was applied. No, oh, I don't, I don't agree that a home occupation should be allowed in a garage because then you get into the discussion that I just, I mentioned in my recent email and that is, well, if, the person is allowed to spend eight hours a day working in their garage, then why can't they sleep in the garage or rent the garage out to someone else who can sleep in the garage? All of a sudden the garage has stopped being a garage and the whole purpose of a garage is to keep your car or boat or truck. I think you're describing a fantastic scenario where we turn housing for cars into housing for people. I don't see a problem there as long as it comp the conversion complies with the building code and occupancy standards, then great. We need and more. In fact, that was a people. traditional pattern was to have the residents upstairs, you know, and the business downstairs or adjoining. Uh, that's a traditional form of, of uh, a business on a property where, where residences also well i don't mind you putting um a rental on top of a garage but i don't think that someone should be doing full-time woodworking out of a garage that that's a that's not a home occupation as the irs views it. yeah well as as we've discussed and I, I think maybe we can get back to what's at hand the that is the way that the town of danby zoning defines home occupation, yeah. specifically including carpentry as a home occupation. Um, but yeah. I, I'd like to get back to finding a level of businesses that is acceptable in the Hamlet neighborhood zone. Um, and if we want to be any more flexible than it, it currently is, which I'll say it currently is more flexible than the low density residential zone. Um, it allows more businesses than would be allowed in the low density residential zone. Not a lot, a little bit. Um, I liked your idea. You that list adding back up on the screen. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I, I didn't Kelly? Hear Kelly? Yeah, I was just, can you just put that the list up on the screen that's in the yeah. Hamlet right now? Just to see that again. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Can you just, not see it right now? What we're saying we is we see the map. She wants the list. Oh, she weird. wants the, the definition. I have the sorry. I have the list on top of the map, but sometimes it's not clear what I'm sharing. There we go. Can you see the list now? Can you yep, expand it a little bit? It's small. Mm -hmm. ah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll get it. Oh, let's over. Hold on, I've got it. No. Yeah, I got it. There. Okay, see what he says. So I'm going to scroll down oh, there. You can see all of the uses by site plan approval and site plan approval on corner lots only. 
and none of the, the, the uses permitted by site plan approval do not include a lot of things that would be allowed as home occupations. Correct. Home occupations are an accessory because they're accessory to the home. So they're in the list on the page above. I don't think we should be allowing five units or more. I thought we were stopped at four. Four so is the limit without site plan approval. This is pretty extensive. Yeah. I'd say. Yeah. Except, you know, the, 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 uh, the more impactful ones are only allowed in corner lots. The community center can be pretty high impact. Child care can be high impact. I mean, depending on how big a child care center you're putting yeah. together. I mean, this, this is, yeah. I'll also say it's illegal to forbid home-based childcare, but childcare centers can be a little bigger. That's what I meant, the yeah, center. Right, right. Yeah. Like the one in, on Coddington. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I guess based on this list, like I could see some of these things being maybe between the two cores but along the mm -hmm. main road you mean yeah along the main road so we but, could i could change this to say um on corner lots or 96b yeah Where? yeah i agree Where? with Kelly. here this number oh, uh, the lower uh, one yeah exactly yeah I yep. just worry that that opens up a lot of potential for restaurants or stores. Um, yeah, and the, I mean, there are some parts of 96B that just seem like they're still pretty far from the core. So I don't know if that's what's making it hard to define yeah. with just verbiage. But the some of the farthest ones are on the corners, but I that's what- Right. In, right. in a neighborhood where you have a grid, um, where you have more streets, those kind of corners can, it's like a, um, like a fractal of the main street. Like the main street is the real middle, but then you right. have little middles for, you know, it's yeah. the middle of a sub neighborhood. Make it could something and be on all four sides of the, all four sides of the corner. David, can I ask you, the, this idea that it would extend out 96B and your hesitation, is it in the same idea, is, is your hesitation in the same idea as a drive-through that somehow if, if they're too spread out, they're gonna detract from or, or, or they're, gonna, they're gonna sap energy from the core? Yeah, yeah, that is, that's my concern that, you know. Got it. Well, consider that, you know, if, if, if anybody were to build a church, the, the model has gone from being the little church in the middle of town to the, you know, the suburban church complex, you know, with, a, with a, the, the worship space and, you know, and a, adjoining um, buildings which have, uh, you know, classrooms and uh, a, a hall and, uh, and then a whole bunch of parking. Um, and that, you know, might to take up an awful lot of space if it were in the middle of the hamlet. I, I don't think the worry is about churches as much as it's about restaurants and bars, the, the sorts of commercial stuff, like what Olivia has described with the pretty umbrellas and so forth. If that's spread all the way along 96B, then there's no longer a hamlet. And it's also a hodgepodge that has much more danger of failing than being concentrated. And it isn't walkable. So I, I think I get why yeah, David- I agree. It's I true. get what the so it's true. Yeah. On the other hand, a repair shop. It's a different uh, issue. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Well, you know, the whole thing on um huh. shore drive as you get up toward Lansing there. That's you know, it that's what you get when you start getting <clears throat> all of these different types of businesses coming along. And even though they're right along the road and everything, it's not really a hamlet there. There is no hamlet there, really. That corner, 
disappeared. The gas station's gone, and the little sh the little gas station around the corner uh, on what is it, thirty four? That 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 hamlet has sort of disintegrated over right. the last. That was never really a hamlet. It was never really a hamlet, exactly. <laughs> she who yeah. lived in London for those years. Well, speak. it may have been a hamlet many, many years ago when Rogue's Harbor Inn was a true inn. I mean, in, yeah, the, really, right. in its mm -hmm. beginning stages, but yeah. no. I think it's kind I, of an aborted hamlet. But I, I think you're exactly right about um, the character that it's developing as you know, it's like a trying to be a Hamlet while also trying to be uh, car centered. Right. And I think we, yeah. we all agree wow. that we don't want that. It's not really attractive at all. Yeah, I, I did want to just clarify because I think a lot of people have been confused by repair shop and repair shop is not a, an auto shop. It's um, a it's furniture awesome. or it's electronic awesome. repair or, you know, a place to take your phone, uh, a tailor. Dress. Those, those well, what things. about, yeah. what about lawn mowers, you know, small engine repair? That's what I, what I really don't want to get into because there's one on um, Route 89 as you go up toward Hosmer's winery and oh man, all of these small engine machines that he has have spread out all over the front lawn and they're rusting away and it looks Yeah, horrible. Yeah, Rhonda, I'm just gonna cut you off because yeah, that would not count in this category either. That would also be automotive. But it needs, it needs clarification though because you know repair yeah. shop evokes in my mind um, you know everything from you know Absolutely. appliances I, I, to, it, to cars yep so that's something that would have a definition and the code already specifically defines auto repair which is a different use mm -hmm. what about gyms and things like that so that is not something that's envisioned in this zone um, but I I believe it is listed in the other zone. Let me scroll up and make sure. Because a small local gym might be actually something quite popular. Oh yeah, so that would be would fit under personal services. Okay. Or professional office. I think more personal services. Personal services, which is what a salon would go under. It's what massage would go under. I, it's what a yoga studio would go under. Right. Okay. And that's something permitted in the in the neighborhood. In the core, not in the neighborhood. In the or is oh, it in, actually, I think I think it is in the neighborhood on corners, personal services, but not over three thousand square feet. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So in the neighborhood, somebody could have a yoga studio, but it would be limited in size. And limited to only corner parcels, as currently written. Mm -hmm. Unless they were home occupations, which they nice. often are. Right. So it sounds like we're coming around to maybe it's okay as it is. Well, repair shop needs to be defined. Well, you know, it's okay. With, I want to clarify. Exactly I would agree with Ron. Let's, 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 and maybe. I don't know if we need to define a garage. I mean, we have a lovely um, neighbor down the road who has a huge garage, but it's actually a woodworking studio. He mm -hmm. lives on the lot and it's he, he's done an amazing job fixing things up. So I don't know whether that. Was that the guy who had the race cars? No, 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 not at all. He does big uh, balsa wood um, art installations all around the country. Oh, right, right, right. I know. Jeremy Holmes. Yeah. And yeah. So, so uh, lanes is it would be a non-conforming use then, right? That's correct. Why is that, Joel? Well, because it exists, uh, but but it's not something that would be otherwise allowed. Not on a corner. Oh well, what would happen to them then? <laughs> it's a non-conforming non use as long as it persists. Yeah, so they can exist forever, um, but they Is nobody. Knew, yeah, right. but nobody new could come in and open a new business like that in the Hamlet. Who? Oh, it, they could split, or somebody else could buy it, right? 
I mean, sure. Yeah. As long, it can as, long continue, as the use continues. It, it can continue in use forever. Yeah. It would probably be better if they sold it and it became something else because it's quite a large parcel and sure. right on the corner. Kind of yeah, I, space. I agree with Rhonda, but I, could I don't it. like them. So where, no. would you, well, where would you put such a business? It's a good repair facility. It's an excellent garage. Oh, I wasn't I making any comment on, on how good they are. I was just saying that for use, it's it takes up an awful lot of space. I'm with you, but there are a thousand people. Well, there are 500 people who are going to say they don't want it to disappear. Right. Well, because they get it, their so that's not an issue. But the question is, if you were, if it weren't there, where would you where where could one open such a business? I assume that that would be something that would be permitted in the in the hamlet where Rick Dobson had his. Yeah. Well, it's not it's not listed here, is it? It is not. It it's is a repair. Thing. It's repair. It's yeah, not. not. It was just explained that repair as it's listed here does not include auto repair. Not so auto where, repair. where would auto repair go? I think that's one of the things we're asking about on the outside of Hamlet. Um, no, I would have thought that that's the most appropriate place is inside. You know, like, in the survey. I, but do you, want, do you want lanes inside the Hamlet? It is inside the Hamlet. Yeah. I mean, in an ideal world, that would be land that could be used for you know, some other kind of development. But I mean, it's there and people do need it. And despite the fact that I think they're totally unscrupulous, I, I think that there is a need or someplace in the hamlet to have a business like that. Yeah. Well, maybe we shouldn't talk about it since it's already there. <laughs> and it doesn't look like it's going away. I, the question was, but can so, it, wanted it, to it, build a garage. Yeah. How would they build it? Yeah, so, I mean, if somebody, I think yeah, there's there's two questions here. One, should somebody be able to buy Olivia's parcel and put up a competing uh, thing just like lanes across the street, and would that help to make the hamlet that we're envisioning? I think no. the answer to that is no. No, but on the other hand, if they did it on Rick Dobson's property, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Or but the it, property across from um, the gallery. Mm. So, so that puts it in the in the in the neighborhood zone outside the core. Yep. But but on the but along the main road, so that's one of those that's one of those things that you know you would you might not mind so much on the main road where you might not want to plop it in the middle of a neighborhood otherwise off the main road. I don't know where it could go. It could go down on Hornbrook Road uh, next to the highway department. I think it's about the highest impact use for a neighborhood that you could think of. I mean. You're talking about toxic chemicals, uh, yeah. air impact guns for 10 hours a day, um, you know, right. welding. And there's someone who works downtown, it's convenient to drop off your car and be able to walk to work. Um, That's an app for recharge area. So we get but, options. Um, no, auto salvage. Or auto salvage, right. Um, well, the thing is, there's there is transportation on 96B, so people right. can drop off their car there and get a bus into town. Right. So. But down there by the highway department seems to me to be already um, similar use to what it was. But Rhonda, somebody has to buy that lot, which is expensive, and then have they have to get down to 96B to get a bus into town and right. they have to provide a car facility, you know, to, to get the people downtown. So, I mean, I I said, I, the junkyard is similar. Well, I, I feel like we're kind of spinning our wheels. We're after nine o'clock and mm -hmm. I, I think if people have strong opinions on wanting to make it possible for more car repair or car sales locations to open in the Hamlet, Please email me. <laughs> and uh, if you have strong feelings that we should not be more car dealerships or car repair businesses in the Hamlet. Well, they need to be already have. They need to be someplace in town. I mean, I just yeah. I, I, I yeah. Just like names and yeah. Names. Olivia, nobody nobody's suggesting pushing them out. We're yeah. just saying oh, uh, aren't we? not allowing if, it, if there's no if there's no place, 
you're not pushing them out is to say really, if they already exist they can stay but uh, yes. but if they well, close, Joel, this we, is only in the hamlet area there's the rest of the entire town but where they're not permitted either though that's uh, though we haven't really dealt with it well that's what i mean if, if it's not going to be in the hamlet then we can consider it there yeah that's what the survey was about along the highway right right yep. If we could get control of lanes and the property next to the town hall and we had my properties and we could find somebody who was willing to come in and do something on those lots that we liked, it would be ideal. Yeah. In seven, seven, I agree. We would already. have everything we want. <laughs> it would be beautiful. It would be like Burlington, Vermont. Exactly. Right. We just need those two properties. <laughs> well, what if we got what if we got all that and then the neighbor didn't like the idea of having something next to it? There would be no neighbors because it would be the town hall. <laughs> what yeah, is going there? on with that parcel now next to the town hall? Hold on, I, I think this is an important um, Red. What if what if the guy who lives on uh, Bald Hill in 96B next to Lanes, um, and we on had Lanes, and we had the the lot with the old Greek Revival, and we had Olivia's right. parcel, and the most of the town said we want a community center, we want the Hamlet to be a community center, we want a place to go, but the person who lived next door said, I don't want anybody coming here, I don't want any traffic, keep it away. There'd be what no person do? next door. There's no person next door. There's no next no one next to lanes. Well, there there is. I have, there I have there's a park. There's, there's a corner some, house. There's a shed there. Well, there's a house next to it. Yeah, it's part of the house that's right there. Well, it he backs could be, up to lanes. They could be included in that in that you know core development. Well, that, that's that's what I'm saying. Um, when we're thinking about the rights of someone who lives next door compared to what the town wants, if that it would be better than door, having lanes, it would be better for them than having lanes and all the cars. Well, what if they disagreed? <laughs> I, I think it's important to think about because we are, and there's not going to be an answer, and I'm kind of putting you on the spot, Olivia, um, but uh, because I know you can take it. <laughs> um, I think that's an important consideration for us to be thinking about as this committee yep. who's making a decision for the whole town. Sometimes someone who's a neighbor isn't going to like some of the things that we are proposing. Um, and we have to decide how okay right. we are with that. Maybe so in a particular case, essentially one what? neighbor, we would go to them and we would show how beautiful the new scenario would be, and they would say yes. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> when Pat goes and does her survey, she could stop in at Lane's and ask him what um, what are their long term interests. He might yell her off the property. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I think it's best that well, we don't really think a lot about that property for now, but have zoning in place that in the future, if they. But go David, what about the one next to the town hall? Uh, I don't really have any update about it. I I talked that one time to the purchaser, and mm -hmm. um, they haven't come forward with any further plans or done anything else. And what's happening with the house on the corner of Michigan Hollow Road in ninety six B? The one when with it, the roof falling when it's in. got the roof falling in, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Well, how do we how do we contact these individuals? Like Kyle, I think he's the one who had the property um, at West Miller and 96B where our welcome sign is. And he had a lot of rental units there for a while, and now it's kind of also just becoming really um, run down. How do we find these people and kind of let them know about the opportunities or, you know, to find out whether we can help them or, you know, buy the properties or how can we do something like that? Um, well, basically all the information that I have is their address um, because it's on assessment records. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we can, you know, through our networks, people know People, it's not a big place. Um, I'm sure someone that we know knows Kyle. Um, you know, I just went and actually talked to neighbors of a house down on Heisey Road in 96B that's been abandoned that was before the town board yesterday. 
um, the bank was coming to the town and saying, what do we do with this property? And turns out the neighbor, neighbors on two sides would be happy to buy it. Oh, good. Um, yeah. okay. I mean, because um, yeah. in Kyle's property also is adjacent to another abandoned property that, you know, maybe if the two properties are put together, that could be, you know, oh. affordable yeah. housing there or. Yeah. So again, that that seems like phase two to me. Of yeah, I think so too. Um, you know what we do once we have zoning that's friendly, then we work on recruiting businesses and talking to property owners about you know people who want to buy, people who want to sell, those kinds of things. Um, but honestly, there, there's no way I can be doing a lot of that right now. Okay. Um, with that said, I think that that puts us in a reasonable place to wrap up the meeting. Um, nice to spend another evening with you all. Uh, <laughs> we'll see how this uh, oh, Thursday situation works out. If it's just too confusing for people or or what, I, I hope that it works out better. Um, I did the same, you know, I made sure that we had an email out and Facebook out this week. Um, so we'll, we'll see, but I appreciate everyone who's here. You're all wonderful people and I hope you have a good night. Thanks, David. Thanks for being Thank so patient. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, one. David. Bye. 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 Bye.